Hi, welcome back to the Mentored Engineer. In our last video, we're talking about directional control valves and how um, the, the center position and everything matters. And I mentioned a tandem valve uh, center and how it's a bad thing if you have multiple functions. So in our log splitter, we actually have this uh, bad situation um, in, uh, in practice. And it doesn't make such a big deal on this uh, piece of equipment because it's rarely that I'm going to be operating both the jib and the splitter mechanism at the same time. But I still want to illustrate what would happen if I did. Okay, so um, I've got my pump. Pump's putting out oil in its natural configuration. It's going through the first valve, coming out the tank line, going through the second valve, coming out the tank line. All right. If I shift this valve, um, what um, I, I, I do is actually send oil, let's just say I'm shifting it up, so I'm retracting the cylinder, and I'm shifting oil from the base of this um, back here through this to the tank line and going into the pressure line. Uh, and then if I decide to do this one, I'm going to be using the oil from this base, not from the pump, to be doing the work. Okay, so let me tell you why this would get a little wonky. Uh, especially if I'm doing this with four or five sections of stuff. Um, so let's say I'm going to shift my valve down here so that I... Oops, I'm sorry. No, that's right. So that I am pressurizing this line. Alright, and let's say I have 3,000... PSI, right? And I have a 2 to 1 ratio on this cylinder. Alright, so that means 3,000 PSI in there, and I'm actually getting 6,000 PSI here to stall out the cylinder. Okay? Um, so I have the potential. It mean, doesn't mean I'm doing it, right? Because this theoretically is going back to tank. This oil is, I knew I had an error in there. This oil is going back to tank here. Um, should go right back to tank, right? So that's a problem. What happens if I now grab this jib and I'm gonna shift it this way as well and I'm gonna pressurize this and I'm trying to pull a stump out of the ground while I'm trying to split at the same time. I know, highly unlikely, but Theoretically, it could happen. Um, I can build up 6,000 PSI when I stall out this cylinder, or before this cylinder stalls out. Now, I don't know about you, but I doubt the tank line on my, my valve here is rated for that. I doubt that this hose is rated for that. I doubt the pressure port of this thing is, is rated for that, or either of the cylinders. So I've got a whole lot of weird things that could uh, go wrong. All right, so let's do it the other way. Um, so that's bad, really bad, okay? Uh, so if I go the other way, and I now put 3,000 here, and my two to one ratio, uh, I'm only getting out 1,500 PSI, right? I cut my pressure in half. And that's assuming I'm not doing any work either. Although on a retract, I'm probably not doing any work. All right? So now if I go over here, and let's just say I have a, uh, I'm trying to lift a load um, that takes more than 1500 PSI, it's just going to stall. I'm not going to relax that handle, and it'll go up, and I pull the handle again, it goes down. What's the deal? Um, so there's, that's, that's another problem, I, is that now I don't have enough pressure to do what I need to do. The other thing is, is if I'm holding this and I run out of stroke, uh, if I go all the way back, I have essentially zero PSI, and now I'm going to overheat uh, oil uh, from the pump, and I have nothing downward to do. So I, I, even if I want to do this, I can only do it for a split second or so. So that's why we don't want to do uh, tandem centers with multiple valves. All right, so what we do want to do is we want to have um, the, the through center. And what that does is it allows me to 
uh, take this oil. All right, so I'm gonna change this center here. Actually, I'm gonna redo this whole thing. All right, so what I, what I do is I close off my pressure port, and then I have one that just goes through, and it always goes through. Now I have to add another uh, little blockage here on all my other ones. And what I do at this point is I now have uh, my tank line actually go right back to tank. Excellent. But I have another port here that I can send over here. And I will do the same thing with, with this valve. Although it doesn't have to change since it is the last one. Um, what I have is, oops, wrong color pen. Is I have um, blockages. And uh, I also have this one come, and if I want to, I can actually take this off to another one. So at some point I have to uh, cap that. All right, but what happens here is, as soon as I shift this valve, right, this flow that goes straight through stops. All right, and it has to come over here to pressure and it'll go out to the cylinder as it needs, depending on whether I shift it this way or shift it that way. Um, so that avoids that uh, unpleasant situation of uh, just expecting weird um, function out of the cylinders. Uh, the other thing it allows me to do is to better control uh, the two cylinders. So um, before I would be taking oil out of this cylinder and powering the next one. And that works for a very short period of time. Uh, but what I can't do is flow share uh, of any kind. Uh, so now I can, I can move this one just a little bit, I can move this one just a little bit, and uh, play with them and feather those as, as I need. Um, but for our log splitter, like I said, it is very rare that I would split and want to use the jib at the same time. I'm just not that coordinated and I can't really think of a reason to do that. Alright, well I hope this explains why we would not want to use a tandem center for multiple valves. And uh, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.